Lesson 6-7, Convection and Radiation. Convection is the flow of heat due to the actual movement of matter. It's to be done artificially, like a circulatory system, pumps blood throughout your body and moves the heat around in your body. Or a radiator pumps antifreeze throughout an engine to move the heat around the engine. Or it could be natural, like the difference in densities of fluids with different temperatures. So, you know, hotter fluid is less dense and it moves up to the top. So warm air rises, cool air falls, same thing with water and other fluids. When you're working out, your sweat evaporates to cool you. How much sweat must evaporate to lower the body temperature of an 80 kilogram man by 1 degree Celsius? So here we are moving the fluid, the sweat, from in your body to out of your body, and that is convection. All right, so we are going to cool the man. So cooling the man, he's not changing state, so our energy is mc delta t. We are also, this is being done by evaporating the sweat. Well, evaporating is changing state, so the M is mass times L. And we're evaporating, so it's vaporization. But this is the sweat. The mass here is the man. All right, there's no net heat loss, so the amount of energy used to cool the man is the same as the amount of energy used to evaporate the sweat. So those are going to be equal to each other. All right, so the mass of our man is 80 kilograms. All right, um, the C for body tissue is 3,500 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. That's from a table we had. And our change in temperature is one degree Celsius. We need to find out how much sweat, so we need to find that mass, and um, we're going to use 37 degrees Celsius water for latent heat of vaporization, so that's 2.43 times 10 to the 6 joules per kilogram. That was also from a table. So all we have to do is divide to find the mass of the sweat, which is 0 0.115 kilograms of sweat. Or, one winter day, the climate control system of a large classroom malfunctions. As a result, 2,000, or sorry, 250 meters cubed of excess cold air is brought in each minute. At what rate in kilowatts must heat transfer occur to warm this air by 10 degrees Celsius? That is to bring the air to room temperature. So in other words, how much so this is convection again because we're bringing in this cold air and then we want to warm it up. So power, because that's what we want, we want watts. Power is work over time, but our work is actually energy, so it's our energy over time. We're warming up the air, so our, our heat is mc delta t over time. All right, uh, we do not have a mass. So if we use density, density is mass per volume, because I do have a volume. For air, the density is 1.29 
from back in the lessons where we had density. Need the mass, our volume is 250 meters cubed. Therefore, our mass of the air, if I multiply, is 322.5 kilograms. So our mass is 322.5 kilograms. C for air is 721 joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. And our change in temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. And the time, um, each minute. There's our time as a minute, 60 seconds. Run that all through your calculator and you get 3.88 times 10 to the 4. And it comes out to be joules per second, which is a watt. Uh, if you divide by 1,000 to get into kilowatts, you get 38.8 kilowatts to heat the room. Wind chill. Wind chill is a convection. Air feels colder when the wind is blowing because it blows the heat away from you. So by conduction, your um, body heats the air that's right next to your skin, but then the wind blows it away. That's convection. The air actually moves. Uh, table 14.4 shows the wind chill based on the actual temperature of still air and how fast the wind is moving. So that's table 14.4. So looking at that table, what temperature does still air cause the same chill factor as 2 degrees Celsius air moving at 5 meters per second? So you need to look at the table, find 2 degrees Celsius, 5 meters per second, and it says that feels like negative 16 degrees Celsius. All right, move on to radiation. Heat from the sun reaches the earth without contact, contact, conduction, sun does not touch the earth, or movement of a fluid, so there's no convection. The energy is transferred by electromagnetic waves. That is radiation. Radiation is the transfer of energy through a mag electromagnetic waves, which include radio waves, microwaves, x-rays, infrared, and visible light. All bodies and objects continually emit radiation. Bodies like ice cubes emit very little radiation. Warm bodies like human bodies emit infrared radiation. When the temperature of a body reaches about 1,000 Kelvin, it starts to emit visible dull red light. When the temperature reaches about 1,700 Kelvin, it emits a white hot light. So by the radiation, you can see the temperature. For example, there's a picture. And there's the same picture, but infrared instead of visible. And you can see there is something in the trees. So that's how infrared cameras work. They look at the, the different, um, yeah, they're looking at infrared and warm bodies produce more infrared. And so you can see it there in the picture. Different objects react differently to radiation. A black box will absorb most of the radiation. A silver box absorbs a little radiation because it's mostly reflected away. 
So everything else that's not absorbed is reflected. So a black box absorbs a lot, reflects a little. Silver box absorbs little and reflects a lot. Since it absorbs all this radiation, the temperature rises on the black box. So black is usually a good absorber of radiation. So we call a black body an object that absorbs all radiation that hits it. Now there's nothing that's uh, completely a black body, but there are things that are really close. All objects emit and absorb radiation continually. Good absorbers are also good emitters. So a black box absorbs radiation. It also emits good um, radiation so you can feel the heat from it. On a sunny summer day, well, you should wear light colored clothes because the black clothes absorbs the sun radiation. Then it will re-emit the energy. Half that re-emitted energy will be on the inside of the shirt onto you. The other half will be out outside. Light colored clothes absorb and re-emit much less radiation. So of course we have a formula for radiation. It's the Stefan Boltzmann law of radiation. So Q over T is the rate of heat transfer. And then we have the step, um, Stefan Boltzmann's constant, 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8 joules per second meter squared Kelvin to the fourth. E is the emissiv emissivity, which is the percent of the radiation emitted as compared to a perfect emitter. A is the surface area and T is the temperature in Kelvin. And notice it's T to the fourth. So this temperature is uh, very much affects the amount of heat transfer. Because heat is both emitted and absorbed at the same time, the net rate of heat transfer is that. And so they now have two temperatures, the object and the surroundings, because the surroundings are also emitting into the object. So if they tell you the temperature of the surrounding area, you'd use the second one. If you just want to know how much heat is emitted or absorbed, um, then you use the first one. So find the rate that heat is radiated by the sun if the surface temperature is 6,000 Kelvin and its emissivity is 1, meaning it is a perfect black body. You say, but it's not black. That just means that it absorbs and emits heat or radiation perfectly. All right, so Q over T equals sigma E A. Now we have to worry about um, is this the net um, transfer or just from how much is transferred out from the sun. It is not net, it is just the transfer out from the sun, so we just could say t to the fourth. We have an issue though. We need to know our area. So from looking it up, the radius of the sun is 6.69 times 10 to the eighth meters. Area is 4 pi r squared for a sphere. So our area would be 4 pi times 6.69 times 10 to the eighth meters squared, which is about 5.62 times 10 to the eighth meters squared. So now we can fill in and find our rate of heat transfer. Sigma is the constant, the Stefan Boltzmann's constant, 5.67 times 10 to the negative 8. E is 1. Our area is 5.62 times 10 to the 18. Now my calculator, I'm going to put more decimal places. 
and our temperature is 6,000 Kelvin, and that's to the fourth. Run that all through the calculator, and we should get about 4.13 times 10 to the 26 joules per second. That is a huge amount of heat every second. Wow. find the rate that heat is radiated from a bald head. If we estimate that it is a sphere with a radius of 120 millimeters and an emissivity of 0.97. The body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius and the surrounding room is at 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we have Q over T. This time, since this is what we want as the net, so we are going to be subtracting these temperatures. So our sigma is 5.67, that's the constant. The emissivity, the E is 0.97. Our area, our area is 4 pi times our radius, 120 millimeters is 0.12 meters squared. And then we have our temperatures. Our temperatures are, uh, oh wait, 37 degrees Celsius and 20 degrees Celsius. Well, add 273.15, so this is 293. 0.15 Kelvin, and that's to the fourth. Add 273.15, and this becomes 310.15 Kelvin for the body temperature. To the fourth run that through your calculator and you get negative 18.6 joules per second or negative 18.6 watts which means is losing just a little bit of energy every second that your body then has to create. Your radiant face conveys happiness at the thought of doing these problems. Have a good day.